still have my mask on. All You're right. Really cute holder for the mask. Thank but... you. Okay. I think we're live on, oh, we're live. on both. We're live. Hi, okay. Hello. So we are going live today. Amber Coleman, my sweet friend from Guild Mortgage here with me. Um, we are always live. nice to be with you. It's lovely to be with you as uh -huh. always, you and your gorgeous red locks. <laughs> um, we are live on Instagram at Las Vegas Gal as well as here on YouTube. So for both of both audiences, just want to make sure you know that's the plan today. If you have questions about the Las Vegas real estate market, moving to Vegas, or really just want to know how she is so beautiful and so lovely oh every goodness. time. Or this uh -huh. This beauty Stop. right here, I don't think we're like that. <laughs> just, uh, just comment below. Let us know if you have questions. We're going to be answering those live. Like I said, we're going live on YouTube and on Instagram today. Um, we're just going to see how this goes. Let us know if you have any audio issues, and we're just going to kind of take it from there, right? Let's do it. So, uh, Amber, a new the holiday weekend happened. I feel like I have hair all over me. What's going on? See, this no, is what happens when good. you wear black. You're good. It's thank you. Okay, it's December, go. my friend. Can you believe it? No. It's December first today. I'm having a hard time just comprehending it. I had to put it in something. I'm like, what? It's my birthday month, so I'm very excited. Oh, it is. Yes. It's yes. Sagittarius yes. time. Yes, oh, This is your fire time. sign. So it's my birthday month, and um, you know wh what way to what better way to kick off the month than with a new coronavirus strain, right? <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I'm not an asshole. Sometimes I am, but not today. So truly, what we wanted to talk about was just really like kind of kicking off the month of December. Typically, when we talk about real estate, we like to look at the previous month and look at kind of what the numbers are and things mm -hmm. like that. So we can talk a little bit about that. But I think it'd be interesting if we could just jump right into the new the new strain of the virus what we're seeing happen kind of when it comes to rates and just the market and inflation and all those things you, you were really okay. kind of educating me let's do our I best i know so here's what it is like friday right it was a holiday for most so yeah. a lot of people didn't see what the markets did but before Friday, the markets were going up, up, up. So the rates were going up, up, up because all the talk was inflation, right? And we, and we talked about that before. We said, like our last update said that please expect the rates to start to go up. Yeah. They promised it would. Yeah, so. yeah. Because then when inflation happens, the way to curb inflation is to raise rates. So to yeah. kind of, you know, that's how the feds control things. So that's what started happening is we started seeing things go up and up. Yeah. So I was telling people when anytime inflation is the top of the subject, yeah. we're going to see higher interest rates. And then Friday happened and there was the new strain in South Africa. Right. And I, so then all of a sudden I saw the market started going backwards. Well, typically like, I can't say typically, but in the last, what, almost two years that we've been right. dealing with, which is now our typical the right? pandemic. Right. Yeah. Um, whenever there's new news on the pandemic that's in a negative way, mm -hmm. that means that the market will start going the opposite way. So right. we'll start seeing better rates, right? So then yesterday happened and Jerome Powell spoke, which right. is the head of the Fed. Right. Um, and they started talking about inflation. Like, okay, like, well, uh oh, this is this is a, a problem. It's a problem now. Right, right. Um, so then all of a sudden we saw the market go the other way. So I yesterday I was just watching a yo-yo. I was watching a yo-yo like COVID. It start doing one thing and then inflation and do There's the other. Another. So it kind of does the opposite. So like, does it so, depend on what what's the headline of the hour? It kind of does. Yeah. yeah, it kind of does. It depends. So when when we're looking at the stock market mm -hmm. or the bond market, which is which what which what the rates are flowing with, right? It's it it's gonna have to do with both, right? And one affects it different than the other one does. So I can't say that typically when we'd see a new strain like this come out, right? We would be looking at okay, well, we might get a little bit of break in the rates because right. that's what's happened in the last two years since we've been dealing with this. Right. But we haven't had inflation be a problem like it right. is right now. So, well, and that's, that's kind of what we talk about all the time. Like, so, so many people are claiming to be, you know, there's a lot of experts out there, right? But so many people claim to know the answer. They claim to know what's coming, but we've literally never had this happen this ever. Is, no, ever. we've never had this happen. We've yeah. never had both problems, right? You've never had problems. an inflation problem. And, 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 uh, and honestly, in our time, right. We have like in our adult life, I mean, I don't want to say we're old. We're kind of old. It's fine. We're a little it's my bit. birthday month. It's fine. Just age me another year. Thanks, but Amber. But she looks great. Like there's no wrinkles right here. I have a filter on. I have a filter. I love this filter. I love how I have a filter too. Um, but then you look there and then you see. Phil. Yeah. Well, thanks, Amber. <laughs> Just on me though, not on her. She looks fabulous. Um, but it's, in our lifetime though, you know, truly. But in our lifetime, we haven't really dealt with inflation in a bad way either. Right. I mean, like. I've been doing this for 20 years and I can't say that there's been a time that I've had to look so closely on inflation. Right. So on top of like COVID and the, well, I just say the pandemics, right. Like the name keeps changing and right. stuff. The pandemic, we also have inflation. So we're right. kind of going in directions that we've never we seen. can't really base on history. Right. Like usually we can look back in history and kind of say, here's where it went here. So we can kind of know what to expect. This is all new. Yeah. 
Well, so, you know, I know you've been doing this 20 years. I've been in, doing the real estate thing for about five now. Can you believe that? It's been almost five. Crazy. It's crazy. I'm in I my just think about year. that first dinner. I know. I love, I love you. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I, I, I never claim to be an expert when it comes to what, it, inflation or rates or anything like that. That's obviously your world and you're watching it so closely from, from a gut perspective, you know, what, what, what does your gut tell you that we should be telling people to do right now in terms of like, let's say people are thinking about moving to Vegas, maybe sometime next year, or they're in the process of shopping right now. I know you get phone calls panic every day as well as I do of, Oh my God, the rates are, Oh my God. Right. Or, oh my God. There's, yeah. there's a new virus or, Oh my yeah. God. You know, like they're shutting it down. Like every day there's people panicking. So yeah. I'm always doing my best. And I know you are too, to yeah. like calm everyone's not nerves panic. and Don't help panic. you to not be freaked out by the news cycle or about, you know, what's up from down left or right or what your neighbor said or what yeah. your, what your expert buddy who doesn't know anything at all said. So yeah. <laughs> what, what does your gut say that we should be kind of urging people to do? As far as like housing, just in general, like what do they listen to? What should they pay attention to? Maybe. Be, I mean, you want to know what I'm doing? Yeah, I'm girl. Yeah. To nothing. There we go. That's what I was hoping. I'm not you'd listening say. to anything because I, I can't live in a world of fear. Right. I just, I just can't do it. I can't live in a world of right. fear. And there's been things to be afraid of my whole life. So why right. should I be afraid? Right. Of? So in so, terms of like watching this new strain, watching these crazy conversations about the inflation problem that we knew was coming, we told you it was coming. Everybody's mm -hmm. known this was going to be a problem. You know, I know you're watching it from a rates perspective, but are you are you in a position where you feel like people, um, you know, should pay attention to one thing versus another or just silence themselves, put some earmuffs on silence. and listen to the people who are in the local market who know what they're doing? Yeah. Silence yourself, put some earmuffs and yeah. And listen to people in the local market. All right. Well, because shoot, honestly, I knew the answer then. I should have just sold it to you. If there's nothing like, to be honest with you, you don't know who to listen to yeah. anymore because everybody has such different opinion so right. the best person to listen to is yourself by right. like yeah you know like being able to hear yourself right. you're only going to get that through silence so if you're looking to move to vegas and i know that there's a lot of people watching right now who are already in the process of looking or looking to maybe come here next year or even the year after you know the important moment for you to know right now in this in this broadcast is yeah there's a lot of crazy stuff happening. Yes, it's brand new. Yes, it's something that we've never seen before, but we're not scared because we know that the real estate market, no matter what, always rebounds, no matter mm -hmm. what. A lot of people assume there's going to be, oh, we're overinflated. The, the house pricing is going to just come crashing, or crashing down people and colliding down. A lot. a lot of assumptions are being made from a, from a real estate perspective. I can tell you right now, I do not believe that's going to happen. I do not believe you're going to see. Tell me why you don't think it's going to happen. We have an inventory issue. We have an inventory issue and yeah, we have a, exactly. a supply and demand issue. So as, and as long as those rates that you're giving out and the banks are giving out and everybody's really excited about mm -hmm. remain below, you know, the, the crazy rates that people yeah. paid back in the 60s and 70s, which were like 11, 12, 13, 20 percent. Who knows? Right. Mm -hmm. We are well below anything anybody's ever seen, even if they start to creep up. Right. So as long as we're still getting really ridiculously great rates and even as they creep up, I still consider them good. And we still have a su supply demand problem. I do not see the values of our homes going down. Well, not only that too, like people are always looking at what happened 12 years ago and they're like, Which remembering is not the it. Case. So it's yeah. ringing in the head. They made so many laws for that not to happen again. Right. But the other thing I was going to point out is when rent, rents are as high as rents are, that was my next point. it's yeah. going to be very hard for housing yeah. to crash. So, so where we're at right now, just so you know, people need a roof over their head. Absolutely. Right? Housing yeah. has never been more important. Home has never been more important. Mm -hmm. And really, truly, as people are migrating across the country, as they're looking for new jobs, as they're trying to figure out what their next chapter looks like after this pandemic experience that we all had, you know, many are choosing Vegas for obvious reasons. It's freaking Vegas. Hello. There's a hundred thousand reasons. Go watch all my videos on YouTube. You'll <laughs> figure it out. But the, the real reason that we know that we're going to be solid here when it comes to Vegas is we've got new industry coming in. We're not a hundred percent reliant on tourism anymore. We've got sports. We've got, we, we're a legitimized city now. That paired with the influx of people who know that our tax benefits and all the wonderful things that we provide and offer as a state to small businesses, yes. as well as just regular residents, that those two things marry together. And then you have rent climbing as fast as I've ever seen it climb before. And it makes me sad. I'm going to be very honest. For those who aren't in a position to, to purchase a home, it can be a scary moment, right? Um, so these are the moments that I just say, okay, all those things suck. Some of them are great. Some of them are horrible, whatever. But that mishmash pot of stew is that the prices are not going to climb down. They're going to be no, either slowing gonna, and steadying tick, or they're going to continue gonna tick. to tick up. Yeah. And as far as the rates go, I was just watching some of this morning. So this time last year, rates are three eighths of a percent higher than it was this time last year. So we're almost which is the same. 0.375. That's not 
like we're people are talking about higher rates. That's not high rates. It's still a really good rate. And I think that's an important yeah. thing to know. Yeah. So a lot of people see the headlines. Rates are getting higher. Things are going soaring high. You know, people mm -hmm. people use these big buzz not buzzwords. In perspective. It's clickbait, right? Yeah. So please listen to the people who are in the seats that we're in, whether it's us or someone else who you trust, and just know that you know we're here every day doing this job every single day. I can tell you right now, the market is slower here now than it has been all year long. Doesn't but mean isn't we, it typically this time A hundred percent, which is why mm -hmm. we're constantly telling people, if you're looking to get a deal or you're looking to at least have a little bit less of a fight, or you're looking to truly have an opportunity to breathe in the process of buying a home, now is a really good time to do that. Don't follow the crowd. Yeah, don't, don't Buy be when a, they're not. Right, what do we say? Don't be a sheeple. Yes. Be, be the wolf <laughs> in the crowd and make the right decision for you. Um, the real goal for us is, um, is to just continue to educate you about the reality of today in our city. I'm not going to speak about what's going on in Oklahoma, New York, or Florida, because I don't know that we city. We can't. Every city is going to be different with their market. But I do know this market. And what I know is we've got people who earlier this year put their house buying plans on hold because they got scared, right? Because mm -hmm. because they got felt like they got priced out. They didn't want to pay too much for their home. And now some of them are kicking themselves because they realized, wow, if I could have just fought the good fight, I would already have X, Y, Z and equity in my home just two or three yeah. months after closing. Well, not only that, I'm having a lot of them call and say, they just raised my rent. Like two bedroom yes. apartment. What are two bedroom apartments going for right two now? Two bedroom like, apartments are going. I've not seen anything less than fourteen or fifteen hundred dollars. I've not seen. But I've anything. even had some people call me and say my my apartment is costing twenty two hundred. Oh no, there's people paying two two thousand twenty five hundred a month for apartments Crazy. as well. And and that's just the way of the world right now, right? Yeah. The other thing that's happening is people are assuming that they can just come and rent an Airbnb for a month or two. Airbnbs are going for skyrocketing as well. So we are seeing oh, those are going crazy. The too. stuff that's an mm -hmm. easy quick fix is no longer an easy quick fix. The stuff that's a that you know even just getting into a regular rental on your own, you have to have perfect credit. You have to have really solid income. They're asking you to pay in advance. Sometimes you're outbidding another another renter. It's 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 a, it's not fun. So what we're trying to do is help people understand that whether you think you could possibly buy a home or not, you should definitely still call us. There's a link in our description below. And if you're watching on Instagram, there's a link in the bio. We are not a pressure cooker. We're not here to get you into the into no, our. No, it's on your time. You know, it's on your, your time. time only. But we do think it's important that you understand the true lay of the land when it comes to your situation, and and that you stay away from the buzzwords, the headlines, the clickbait, the oh my God, the world is falling, and just realize that you know your life is is what you have control over. The world around us, we do not. So getting weighed down by all of that is not going to help anybody. Mm -hmm. And just leaning into people who you know have your best interest at heart. Um, is going to be the best move for you. I think it's perfectly time. said. I love it. This I'm going to get off my soapbox. This guy is not falling. This guy is not falling <laughs> in either his world. Um, so really the update for us today was to just talk about that, that, how that virus is affecting us. So it definitely is making people fearful, right? It's, it's, it's even making the markets not know. Like We no, don't even they, know what to say. They don't know which way to go. Like like yesterday I watched it yo-yo. Yeah. I watched a yo-yo happen and I'm like, okay, so we don't know which so we when, don't know what to look at, COVID or inflation. So it's it's so we've it, got to find ourselves somewhere in the middle uh -huh. between COVID and inflation. And that to me is is a, a personal conversation, right? That's a do I trust that inflation is gonna be fixed and how long will that take? Do I trust that COVID is gonna be tapered off and go away? Like it, it yeah. really is what's your gut telling you. Regardless, the right decision is gonna be whatever you make because no matter what, real estate when it comes to Las Vegas and buying here in our city is always a good buy. Five years, 10 years from now, real estate's a long-term investment, people. This isn't a buy and flip kind of market. Let's be very honest about that. And it's a roof that. over your head. Yes. I mean, we gotta look at it, yeah, long-term. Yeah. And so we really just wanna make sure you have, the, you, you have the internal compass and knowledge to know kind of which direction you're gonna lean. Do I wait until inflation gets fixed? Do I wait until the coronavirus goes away? Do I just strike right now while the iron's hot and, and hope and pray that it all works out? And Either way, any of those decisions are going to be the right decision for you. So, mm -hmm. um, I love it. Yeah. So at the end of the day, let's talk about the market. So when I say the market has slowed down, you know, I've had a lot of people send me messages. See, I told you it was going to crash. Now just wait. Really? I'm, oh yeah. There's so many. There's so many there's negative so Nancys many out, negative there. out there. Of, you know, and that's fine. That's fine. It's like, funny how the negativity is what gets the gets the attention. I know. It, absolutely. Right? So I'm bringing it up now to make sure that those of you who think that or feel that, I'm letting you know you will regret not buying a home sooner rather than later when it comes to the market that we're in right now. And that's not a fear tactic. That's just honest to God's truth. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not even thinking about buying and you just enjoy watching these videos and enjoy seeing us fumble all over, trying to figure <laughs> out what we're saying. Awesome. But if you're watching this for knowledge, just know the bottom line is, is that real estate bounced back from 2008. This isn't 2008. 
real estate will bounce back from this again as well. And we are not even in a bounce back moment right now. We're in a climb mode. Bounce it's really forward, kind of scary. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. really at the end of the day, if you're looking to move to Vegas, you still want to invest. It is op- It is possible. The way the market has shifted over the last couple of, really last two months, I'd say, um, because of the holiday season coming, because of people going back to school, because of coronavirus, because of whatever it might be, mm-hmm. we've really seen it just slow down a little bit. So what does that mean for you as a buyer? Prior to September, you were probably going to be up against five to 10 to 20 other offers that were offering above the list price, cash out of pocket, guaranteeing the appraised value so that they didn't have to worry about the lender declining the loan, right? Mm -hmm. Tons and tons of Mm -hmm. weird and wacky and unsafe practices, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. We, we, We are seeing a little bit of that still depending on the price point. But for the most part, it's still really awesome, an awesome opportunity and a good opportunity for you to maybe take another look at coming back into the market if you put your plans on hold. Yeah, I've seen people get into houses much faster. Yeah, we're seeing when them go for list money. price. We're seeing appraisals meet the list price, so there's no money out of pocket needed. Yeah. We're seeing maybe one or two offers come in, if not just one. Uh, we're seeing a lot of more realistic sellers hit the market, which is great. We're still seeing a couple of wackies out there that think that they're going to get what their neighbor got six months ago. and. That's not going to happen. And the reason that's not going to happen is because the frenzy of people is not there. It's not because prices are dropping. It's because people have slowed down. The holiday season is upon us. This is a slower time to list your home. It's a better time to be a buyer. That's all I have to say. It's a better time to be a buyer now through probably end of January, I would say, typically. Yeah. What do you think? I think yet last year it started in January. It did. Yeah. We started in January. So yeah, I would say too. I would say you're exactly right. Of course. Now, from a loan perspective, are there still free money Opportunities yeah, the grants people. haven't gone away. The grants are oh, still there. They're all still there. And honestly, if we're not having to fight so many crowds, like right. before, if you were to write an offer with a grant and didn't have a lot and backing it to right. pay over appraised value and all that stuff, you know, it was going to be hard for you. But right yeah. now, it's not. It's not that you're still having to fight in those kind of price ranges right. that the grants would be in. But they're still out there. So and that's so that's important to say. Like, so if you're someone who thought. I'm never going to get to buy a house. I don't have any money saved or I'm never going to be able to buy a house because I'm, I'm a renter for life or I've always rented or whatever. Don't your think like that. Is, please don't think like that. There are free money opportunities to where we can take what you make with your credit score, pair it together with her magic and her potion and say, look, there's a grant program here. There's a free money thing here and yeah. piece it together to help you get over that hump. So yeah. it is an opportunity that I think people forget about and they don't really realize yeah. this is for them. There has been a change though. Yesterday there was an announcement to oh. conventional loans. Um, you conventional loans just means you can go to a higher level uh-huh. or to this level with putting less down. So oh. conventional loans now go up to six forty seven two hundred. I think I said that right. Six forty seven two hundred. Wow. Before it was five forty eight. Never it's up have 100, we 000? seen five forty eight and change. Yeah. Never have we seen it go up that much. And then FHAs will be announced pretty soon. I am I'm floored right Isn't now. Isn't that crazy? A hundred thousand. It's normally twenty. It's almost a hundred. Yeah, like the last year, I think it was five ten and change, and it went up to five forty eight. So what that so means that's is, if, if you're trying to get a loan, and we're seeing prices of homes go up, right? No biggie. Uh-huh. But the problem is, is normally if you were to try to get one of those loans, you would have had to have paid a higher interest or put a put more down. Pardon me, put more down. Yeah. Right? You, if you if you went over the limit that conventional had then you were considered a jumbo Jumbo loan. loan. And so jumbo had higher down payment requirements and just stricter guidelines altogether. So conventional offers not as strict guidelines and you can go as little as 3% down on those. So now they're allowing you to go up to 647, 200. Isn't that crazy? Wow. It went up huge. So within the next week, we should know what FHA's limit just went up. That's awesome. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I think that's another thing because FHA is often a a limiting thing. It's often sort of a lot of first time home buyers or people who are, you know, make the amount of money that would qualify for that. And it's scary as you watch the prices of homes go up, you you start to think, well, I'm only going to be able to qualify for FHA based on what I make. And now I'm not even going to be able to buy a house. So knowing that that conventional change has happened, do you feel like it's going to happen as well with the FHA? Oh, it'll definitely happen. I don't know if they'll go a hundred that I I, I can't, can't imagine see that them they will. going up a hundred thousand. Right, like that's a that's a lot of it's a big jump for them, for not for them but for FHA it's a big jump. But it's still going to go up to the point where you can get a house. Wow, for that price, that's so, awesome. So yeah, so I don't even know. I'm, right. I'm still that's kind crazy. of floored. I know yeah. I didn't tell you that before. We wow. Started, so sorry to catch you off the. No, it was right? it's really good. It's really <laughs> good. Live. Um. So anyway, so we appreciate you joining us. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look over here and see uh, what people are asking. We've got a lot of questions. I have allergies today, so that's why I'm itching my nose Aww. so much. A lot of questions on um, it's on um, let's see, YouTube here. 
isn't three to seven percent in isn't it at three to seven percent inflation matt smith said isn't three to i don't know what that isn't means. it at three to seven percent inflation it depends there's so many different readings for inflation yeah 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 some are in the five so yeah i would say you're pretty Probably right, right I, I haven't seen it come go up to three but i haven't looked at all the different readings they the feds look at so many different readings for inflation some take out food and energy and some include yeah it, so okay but yeah Okay, let's see. Uh, Rob Verdi says, hi, ladies. Disclosure, I've been working with Michelle from your office, who's awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rob. Um, he said, as I've watched the last month or so, I've noticed closing sales have been trending down from original listings. Yes, that's actually a really good point. So kind of back to the point that I mentioned before, how we've got some realistic sellers coming on the market, knowing that their house is worth X and listing it for X and then you know, waiting for the right buyer. And then we've got some unrealistic people who are hitting the market who are still trying to be greedy but bottom line be a little bit more greedy and or who don't have an um a, a qualified professional representing them who is telling them the story of what's happening with the market so they're assuming their neighbor john um three months ago had 70 people bidding on his house and paid xyz over the market value because they needed a house and they had to get into a house that month versus the system now that's happening where the house is definitely valued at what John got, but you're not going to get 70 people, you know, trying to compete mm -hmm. for it at a higher level. So there's a lot of people that are listing their um, houses above what the appraised value is, knowing that it's not even worth that, hoping someone's just going to come in and slap down the money and say, we want it anyway. So yeah, you're going to see that. You're going to see a lot of people doing um, listing it too high and then having to reduce the price. You're going to see a lot of people listing it for one price and then closing at a much lower price. And that's just simply because there's either not a qualified professional giving them the right advice yeah. or the seller's being stubborn and says, I want that and I want that and I want that. So And it could be a game too, right? Yeah. Some people listing them high just so that people can feel like they got a deal. Yes. It really is. There's, it's, there's a lot of that. So mm -hmm. we really try to educate our sellers when we do list homes and just let them know, you know, the market is shifting. Here's where we are today for the next 90 days. This is probably what we're going to see. Um, and anybody listing in this time frame, we're saying the same thing. Do not expect 7,000 offers on your house. Do not expect it to go over. Do not expect people to be coming with cash unless the home is ridiculously upgraded, pristine, and is priced very, very well to offer that opportunity for people mm -hmm. to try to outbid each other. So we really try to come up with a strategy for each and every listing, depending on what it is, but that's why you're seeing that. So yeah, that's it. That's the bottom line. Greed. Greed drives it all, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Rob good. says, is the market starting to peak or are the listings very inflated? Hoping to be your neighbor in 2022. Rob, we hope so too. Uh, we hope you're here. Thank you for working with our team, Rob. We really appreciate it. Um, I, I don't see, I don't believe that we're peaking at all. I, I definitely don't see us going straight up like we did this year. I don't foresee us falling either. So what I foresee happening, and I think you're probably going to agree just because we've talked about it is, you know, we've started to see it slow. But I'm going to tell you right now, early next year, we might start seeing a little bit of a lift again because spring is always when people, spring is when people want to buy houses. Mm -hmm. it's, it's They're looking to spending the summer getting settled in their new home, putting the kids in the new schools by the by the beginning of the it, it, spring is buying season. So I would say January, February will be a very interesting thing to kind of watch closely based on um, what we saw this last summer. We might see the same kind of spike. I hope it's not as drastic. I, um, I really hope that it's gradual. I really want a normalized market. I want it to be fair for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. We want to see first time home buyers be able to get into houses too. Yes. Okay. Matt says, as long as you're in it long term and not selling, I would say buy a higher priced and lower interest. It averages out in the long term, even if you pur purchase low price with a high. It, right. It averages out in long term if you purchase the low price with high interest. Very good point, Matt. Thank you for that great yes, advice. Thank you. I, you know, I'm not allowed to give advice on when to buy, when not to buy, other than just to let you know what the market is doing. And I know that we're not really allowed to give financial advice uh, beyond that. But Matt's got a great, really good point. If you're buying in a market that's appraising and going up, and you're earning money after you've closed and it becomes your home immediately. Back in the day when I first started buying houses a long time ago, you know, you, we could People expect, the year. I mean, genuinely, you could expect to get one to two percent a year lift one to two percent. Maybe one that was 2%. a healthy market. It was a healthy market back in the day. Mm -hmm. This is a long ass time ago. Now we're seeing Not people. That long it ago, was a long though. time ago, but we're seeing much larger gains on a, on a year over year basis to a point that people who bought last December were able to sell over the summer and make a good, enough, good amount of money even after paying all yeah. of the fees. So it's definitely climbing. It's a good time to buy anytime, honestly. Um, and the low interest definitely cheap money is good money, right? Yeah. Well, and that like again, like we were saying, interest rates are only like three eighths of a percent higher as of the report that just came out yeah. um like yesterday. So 
interest rates are still in a really good place. It's nuts. Just not because they hit the lowest doesn't mean they're bad. They're still really good. Okay, Matt's, Matt is, uh, thank you, Matt, for all your amazing comments. I'm not going to read all of them. If you guys want to check us out on YouTube, if you're watching us on Instagram, just pop over to YouTube, um, youtube.com slash Las Vegas gal. Matt has put some amazing advice, some great questions. I'm going to touch on a couple things. Again, Matt, thank you so much. Yeah, he has. He says, um, are you seeing less offers at the moment per house? Yes, we are. It just it depends on the price point. Of course, 200, 300, 400,000, definitely seeing a frenzy. Um, by a frenzy, I mean, instead of it being 15 offers on a home, it might be five, right? Doesn't matter though, just because there's other offers doesn't mean your offer won't be chosen. We're really strategic when we write offers and we try to really build a strong relationship with the listing agent to understand what it is that the selling Per, the seller wants so that we can try to structure your offer to meet all of their needs. So mm -hmm. doesn't always mean money. Money is not always the driver. Believe me. I know that sounds strange to say that out loud, but money is not always the driver. We have a client who just put an offer on a house who got accepted. And the reason they got accepted is because the seller appreciated how well they treated the home and how respectful of the home they were in the home when they saw the home versus the other people who oh, left, cool. left doors that's open, the, left drawers open, right? Didn't take their shoes off, didn't wear a mask. These people followed all the guidelines uh, and these guys had cameras on in the house and said, you know what? They respected our home. We're going to choose them. They were not the highest offer. Well, so, that's awesome. Right? I know. So it does not mean money, money, money only. Yeah. Sometimes it does. Okay. Um, he said the budget suites two bedroom is 2200 right now. Holy crap. Budget suite. Dang, Matt. Way to do your research. Matt. Matt. Oh my God. I like have no words right now. Budget suites is sort of the, the, it's a weekly, I think it's a weekly, isn't our budget suites weekly? They're more weekly short -term, or monthly. Yeah. They're short term, They're short -term rentals. rentals. 2200 a month for two bedrooms. And they are not often the best place to live. Like I have no words right now. I cannot believe that. I like how you picked your words. I had there. to be very careful with what I said there. Thank you for that information, Matt. So if that doesn't tell you that rent is on the rise, I don't, I did not know it was that high. I don't feel very educated right now, Matt. You just knocked me for a loop on that one. Videographer 2006 says I rent in Henderson. It's up 7% recently. I'm so glad it wasn't double digits. Yeah, I'm glad for, for you as well. And if you're renting still, you may want to just give us a call and see if it's pop, a possibility for you to buy this time or next year. Yeah. I mean, right? Well, not only that, too, I've seen so many renters calling me lately, recently, and yeah. saying, hey, my landlord's selling right now. Oh, yeah, that's happening so in a big I need way. To now, now I've, even though I've been renting for years and years yeah. and years, now I need to be able to get out of yeah. my house and find something new and they're so, giving like 60 because days notice they, because yeah. their houses are worth so much money right now the other thing i was going to say too and i don't know if you're getting this but anybody who calls us who's just signed a lease and they're stuck in this year-long lease and they think they're, they're stuck you may not be stuck a lot of landlords are smart enough to know that if they get you out if you decide to go by and you present a case and we can always help you with that present the case of you can get this much more for your house if you let me out of my contract and you put it back on the market. A lot of times they're actually letting people out of their lease so that they can get it on the market and get more money. And then you can move on to the buying process. Oh, that's a good, so, that's a good, a good strategy. Yeah, yeah, really, really good point. Okay. Uh, Mid-2022 quantitative easing will be fully shut off. So I assume shift three or four months after that. But who knows? The feds will kick more money into the bonds. I don't know. We'll have to see. Matt, Matt, I'm going to hire you. You need to Matt, come and work for me. Matt, you really good. Dang. Yeah. He says he does. Okay. Ray Ray says, what does Lake Mead drying up have to do with me as a buyer? Ray Ray loves to bring up Lake Mead every time he comes <laughs> on here. I'm pretty sure this is the same person who always brings it up. You know, Lake Mead isn't drying up. Let's be very honest. Um, there's definitely less water than there was before. And there's definitely things that are being done to correct that. Unfortunately, things, are in the works. things have been in the works for 30 years, yeah. guys. Things have been in the works for so much longer than anybody even knows. I'm not a water expert, Ray Ray. I'm sorry. I can't, I cannot answer that question. But what I can tell you is as a buyer, the way it might affect you is you may not be able to put in a pool in five years. They might restrict the ability to put in pools or they may restrict how often you can water your lawn, or they may restrict the type of desert landscaping or the type of landscaping that you put in. Those are the types of things that would really affect you more than anything. I don't foresee us turning into what I think California had where like you had to be limited on shower times and things like that. I don't think that we're oh, in that did they position. Go to them? Yeah. A friend of mine mm -hmm. told me that at one point, I don't know if it's still there or not, but and, you know, it's, it's no different than any other city and in the, in the world, really, you know, mm -hmm. we really want to be conservationists. We don't want, we don't want to be um, over users and that's just all that's going to happen is mm -hmm. we're just going to be more smart about how we use our water. So hope that helps answer your question. Uh, Matt says, have you seen hedge funds like Blackstone purchase less? 
Did you even see? I haven't. About that? I haven't heard. I'd have to look into it, Matt. I haven't heard anything, but that is a great question. Yeah, I believe it slowed a little bit, just like the market has. But I don't believe. Um, I, I believe the only reason it would be slowing is because the the prices get to a point to where it's no longer a good buy for the hedge funds, right? It's no longer as much of a deal for them. So that's really about it. But I don't, I haven't seen a huge slow. I've seen a, a, a huge The hedge decrease. funds would be buying in cash, right? Correct. Yeah, correct. So there's still as many cash out there. We're yeah, there's definitely still cash, cash buyers, covers. but it's slowed. It's just slowed. It's slowed down. I can't give you a percentage though. I don't know that off the top of my head. But mm -hmm. yeah, they're not stopping buying by any means, but they're definitely not as, there's just not as many out there. That's good because that'll yeah. stabilize the market more. Yes. What grants are available? Matt, you have such good questions. I love it. Matt there's, is going to join us live here in about five minutes. Yeah, the grants, there's a, there's about five different grants. The one that I like to use the most is called Home is Possible. Mm -hmm. Home is Possible allows you to go up to like 105000 on your income. Okay. A lot of the other grants are very restrictive on income. And with the prices of the housings today, we have to be able to have a little bit more leeway there because okay. it's going to take more income to buy a little more expensive house. So. Home is possible is my favorite one. Um, Guild has a, a, a Guild has a hundred percent FHA program as Your well. Your company does. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's income limited. Okay. On it, so that's why I'll use Home is Possible a lot more because they, I could fit into the incomes. Nice. Um, and there's a couple other ones that are out there too. There's there's ones that are for the cities, different cities. There's one that's for rural area. It's called Home at Last. I was going to ask about that one. That one's still happening. That one goes into the south, like the south side, of, like Southern Highland yeah. area. That's it's really good to know. Within that area. Yeah. So there's and grants that only go for certain zip codes, certain areas of town, because we're trying to make sure those areas get developed as well. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And home is home at last, like the rural one. It goes to higher loan or higher income limits too. So. Great question. There's a lot nice. of grants out there, so it's really specific to what your needs are. Yeah, if you guys want to just give us a call, we've got a link in the description below. Definitely anything, any question you have, we would be happy to answer. We are not, like I said before, a pressure cooker. We don't believe in it. We, that's not how we operate no, our business. It's, time. it's we want to just help you have the questions that you or answers that you need to be able to, you know, put that internal compass, set it straight, and just make the decisions that you need to for your future here mm -hmm. in Vegas. Okay, vegan lady says thank you. I've seen. I've seen, I have seven more months on my lease. Vegan lady, you might not need to wait for those seven months, as I mentioned before. So reach out to us anyway and let us know so that we can help you maybe wiggle your way out of that sooner and take advantage of the cheap money while we have it. Sarone Group says, thank you all. Oh, Sarone Group is my team. Sorry. It says, thank you all for being here. We love having these amazing conversations with you. Rent in my, in the Henderson complex has um, one bedroom, 1700 to 2300. Oh, Oh God, I'm going to throw up one bedroom, two bedroom, 2,200 to 28 and three bedroom, 26 to 4,000. I am. I got to throw up. I'm not kidding. In I'm, I'm, I'm wow, wow. I mean, do you, do you realize the size of house you can get for the same it, amount of rent? I, I wish people understood how drastically different that was yeah, from just like, even a no year ago. There's no point in renting. Like even Oof. if you have credit blemishes, let's, let's, let's get you a game plan. Let's get you in a house. Then you don't have to worry about the raising rent like that. I, I'm not kidding. 2800 is the high? Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah, that those rent numbers are, I'm not kidding, just made me feel like I needed to fall on it. And, I, and I'm feeling really nauseous right now. I had no idea they were that bad. And it's it, it does have a little bit to do with Henderson. Uh, Summerland's going to look very similar. But I'm going to tell you right now, I have a friend who's looking Anything downtown. Is. Somebody's looking right now downtown, and I think it's 1400 for a studio apartment, 500 square feet. Really? Downtown. Wow. So... If the rent prices alone don't don't make you start rethinking your strategy, then um, yeah. I don't know what will. Don't listen Honestly. to the naysayers. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, Rob says, thanks, and thank you for all the great information. It's greatly appreciated. Um, if you have 20%, if you don't have 20%, then what do you do? 20% down, you what do you do? You don't need it. Honestly, very few people put 20% down on a house. Mm -hmm. Very few people. So if you can do a grant. That helps you to where you don't have to have anything down or very little down. If you don't want to do the grant, because sometimes the grants do come with higher rates, so you pay for it in the payment, mm -hmm. then conventional has a first-time home buyer 3% down. Conventional is the loan limits that just got raised to that 347 mm -hmm. mark. Um, FHA is 3.5% down. VA is zero. Down. Yeah, if you're a veteran, then yeah, it's a definite benefit because VA is zero. So there's a lot of different programs, but don't let 20% paralyze you in any way because very few people... Yep. actually will do 20% down. Yep. And the only reason, the only way you would is if you usually have a house to sell and then you're buying another house, right. so you cash in that equity and you're able to do that. But right. most of the time, 
first time home buyers will never put that kind of money down. Even even non first time home buyers. I have clients who are putting three percent or three and a half percent down that have purchased six or seven down. homes in their life because they'd rather keep their money cash in their pocket and go be able to go invest it in other things. Yeah. So, yeah. Really smart. good question. Thank you for asking that. Hey, walk with Rhonda. How are you? She was our one of our winners for the Chiefs game giveaway. Oh, nice. Vlog is coming out soon on that one. Sorry it's taking us so long. But uh Jacob, Jacob from Jacob's Life in Vegas and I did a big giveaway where we gave away tickets to to hang out with us at a Chiefs Raiders game here in Vegas and Rhonda was one of our winners along with Pollux Pollux of Inter World of Entertainment. I saw I saw him on your channel. Yes, That's we had awesome. a great time. Good to see you babe. Thanks for joining us. Okay, let's see here. Paul says the neighborhood guides by Battleborn Steve are awesome. I'm looking forward to one about Rancho Circle. Thank you, Paul. If he you does are do he's really incredible. Good. Battleborn yeah. Steve is um one of my amazing team members on Sarone Group. We have I'm so blessed. I have some of the greatest, coolest, yeah. most amazing, most genuine, awesome people who are serving our community um, right alongside me. Battleborn Steve is one of them. If you're not already subscribed and you're watching this on YouTube, please go to the description, click the link and subscribe to his channel. He does Vegas streets episodes where he takes you into certain neighborhoods. They're very fun. They're really cool videos. He's doing driving tours. And on the Sarone Group channel, guys, we're doing 360 driving tours where you control the camera. So we drive and you spin it around and you decide what you want to look at. And we're looking at every single little pocket of the city. So we are busting our ass to put out content to help you make the right That's decision awesome. when it comes to moving to Las Vegas. And Rancho Circle, what a great, you know, like he just su suggested to go to Rancho Circle, right? It's, it, it's That's like a nice little pocket The most there. beautiful, cute uh -huh. little, I just love it. That Rancho Circle, I love any of the vintage Vegas areas I love yeah. actually. But yeah. yeah, so thank you so much for watching, Paul. And thank you for shouting out, Steve. Please Follow him everywhere. He's amazing. <laughs> okay. Um, do you want to buy a fixer up or are contractors overbooked or readily available in Vegas? John, great question. That is a great question. I'm just waiting for it. They're not booked up? No, they're booked up. Don't do oh, it. Don't do it. I was now, like, whoa. Listen, there are lots and lots of smaller contractors who you can work with to get your flooring done and things like that. But if you're looking to do a complete renovation or a ground up kind of experience, that's not the way to go. What I would recommend is call us, click the link in the um, description. We have a list of vendors that we work with really closely. We can let you talk to them first before you start the buying process, just to get an idea of what their schedules are kind of looking like. We've got painters, we've got uh, flooring experts, we've got window experts, we've got garage door people, we've got people who do it all um, as a contractor. My very good friend, Lincoln, um, he's amazing. He's done several renovations for yeah, our clients. Lincoln on your channel. Yeah, right? and he does get booked out, but, it, but he's not, like, if you're coming in to do a full-blown deal don't do that come in and buy a house that just needs new flooring or just needs new paint or maybe just a new kitchen cosmetics you then. can go do that stuff no problem but yeah it's crazy it's crazy right now these guys are getting booked out crazy because people are doing exactly what i just said they're buying and then they're saying i want to do the kitchen and then they get it done so if you don't have a quick timeline and you can deal with ugly kitchen for two or three months definitely a good time to buy all right neighborhood guides okay um, vegan lady says I pay fourteen sixty four for a studio and I'm embarrassed. Listen, no need to be embarrassed. You got to have a house to live in, right? You got to have a place to live. Everybody Home is needs possible. to rip over their head. Home is important, but if that's what you're paying for rent right now, I definitely think that we could look let's, at getting you into a at, house. Let's look at a game plan for you. Yeah. To get you into a house. Please click the link. Please, even if we just talk to you and we decide it's not the right time, please click the link. We want to make sure that mm -hmm. you're getting the most for that money. Thanks for sharing, by the way. The, uh, let's see. How do we win your giveaways, Matt? When we do giveaways, we do stuff on um, on YouTube as well as on Instagram. You need to be following Las Vegas Gal on YouTube as well as on Instagram, as well as the Sarone group on both channels. Um, and what we do is we'll announce kind of how you can enter to win each and every time we do a giveaway. Uh, we are not doing another Raiders giveaway this year. We probably will next year, so stay tuned for that. But we have some other really cool giveaways that might include a trip to Las Vegas, uh, which includes a hotel stay and dinner and some other things coming up early next Definitely year. Definitely worth watching. Definitely she, worth subscribing. She gives away some good stuff. Yes. Yeah, so we, so Jacob, Jacob's life in Vegas, Jacob Orth is a very close friend of mine. He and I love giving stuff away. We love meeting you guys in person. So yeah, if you're not subscribed, you're not going to know how to win, my friend. So be <laughs> sure to subscribe and just stay tuned. Lots and lots of good stuff. I'm actually doing some giveaways tonight because it is my birthday month. I'm going to be at a local small business and down you're on Main Street. very for your birthday. I am. Yeah. Uh, we're doing giveaways inside For the Love Las Vegas, which is a new boutique that just opened up on the uh, Main Street downtown. Um, I'm going to be there from 5 to 7, and we're going to do giveaways, free champagne, free cake. You get to hang out with me. I mean, hello. <laughs> worth it. And then um, also, also some fun discounts for anybody who wants to do some Christmas shopping or holiday shopping while you're there. So that's nice. how you win. That's how you that's enter exciting. to win. Um, rent is, uh, let's see. 
Uh, good evening from Copenhagen. I voted for no change in the next 10 months, uh, 10 days until I'm in Vegas. Listen, I'm going to vote for no change till you get here as well. I'm Hello right from you. Copenhagen. Wow. Yay. How awesome is that? I, it's nice to see that the borders are open and that you're able to visit again. That's really cool. I know that and a you're couple gonna... of friends that weren't able to. Oh, they did for, they get for a long, long time. They were not, they've not been oh, able to visit. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. would love, love the You're going to fall in love with Vegas too. Yeah. We're excited for you. Oh my God. Um, all right. I'm, I'm going to see if there's any questions over here. How much does a no fixer upper, how much does a no fixer upper range out there? So a no fixer upper house, well, not sure if that what, question. Depends uh, on what side of town. Yeah. And like what, what, um, the, how big it is. And our median, our median home prices right now are about 406, 500. Um, and that's median, right? Um, it depends on your budget as well. Side of town, um, how old the home is, what it looks like. You know, there's so many factors that go into play, but um, that's our median price. So I hope that helped to answer your question. All right, let's see what else everybody's saying. I think everybody should watch the big short. We're still in a big crash worse than 2008. We need to wake up. System is crashing. Hate to break it to you, but that is exactly the opposite of what we've been saying all day today. <laughs> um, that is not the case. The Big Short's a great movie, though. Highly recommend it. Definitely educated <laughs> me on what really happened in 2008 for our city as well as our country and the world in general. Um, mm -hmm. No. That's not what's happening. So just to, I guess, recap, let's close this out and just make sure everybody hears the okay. exact message we want them to hear. Put your earmuffs on. Try not to go along the roller coaster. That inner voice. That Listen inner to the voice. inner voice. And it might that sound a little bit like good. me and, and Amber, and I'm sorry if that's the case, because I even get tired of hearing me. But we really want you to know that, yes, it's crazy. Yes, there's a new virus strain in the new virus. Yes, there's a lot of stuff going on in the inflation world. We've got inflation, and we've got the new strain of coronavirus, yeah. and we're smack dab in the middle. What we're not going to see is crashing of prices, people losing their homes, things like that. There's way too much equity too in the market. Too many things are going on. There's that. too much demand. And if you're talking about the great short, that's why there's so many laws. Mm -hmm. right? If I said that movie right. But that's why there's so many laws that were put into place after that time frame to stop yeah, that from happening that's, again. Unfortunately, that happened because there were not enough protections in place. Now there are. And trust us, we know it because we feel the pain of it every day as we're trying to get loans approved from honest citizens yeah, who are not gonna, hiding anything. You're going to find that we're asking for a lot of paperwork. A lot of information. Uh -huh. It's a very invasive process, the job that you do. Yeah. It's tough. <laughs> you should be a surgeon. You should have like <laughs> precision tools the way yeah. you go in there. But um, but we appreciate it because you're doing the job that needs to be done. You're making sure that we're you know on the up and up and that we're getting loans that we can actually pay for. So mm -hmm. that's the process. So no crash, not anytime soon. It will be very interesting, as you've mentioned, to watch what happens with this weird conundrum that we're in. We're right in the middle of these two big issues. Yeah, the inflation and the new strain, and they both go different directions. Yeah. So it is, it will be fun every day to watch what happens. Push and a pull. Depending yeah. on the headline. Yeah. So the, the really day. the guidance to you is if you're thinking about buying, um, now's a great time to do it because it is a little bit of a slower market. The holidays definitely quiet things down. Mm -hmm. Last year, January 1, things went crazy. And I don't know if that'll happen again this year. So while it's a little bit quiet, at least reach out to us and get the conversation started. Um, we will help you happy, happily help you now or 10 years from now. We just want to make sure that you have the right information and that you're not listening to clickbait and that you're not worrying yes. yourself to death over and stuff rates that is are not still, to be worried about. I didn't mean to cut you off. You're fine. And rates are still very good. So, and they will I mean, be good for a while. Like I, do you we foresee can, them know. going from three, whatever to, and I'm just making up numbers cause we can't quote rates, but let's say three to like 10 overnight. I, it, no, cause the, I mean, the feds have to, they have an, a balance, a balancing act act. that they have to do yeah. not to crash. Right. So things. it might tick up a little and it will tick up. It will. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely going to do but that. It, they, it, they've already said that they're going to tick up over time. Yeah. You know, so it's not going to be a, a fast grow. So. so buying on a higher price while, while money is cheap is definitely a good buy. Thank you again, Matt, for that mm -hmm. awesome advice for our, for our viewers. Okay. I'm going to, I'd say we wrap this up. Yeah. I think we've talked, I've talked myself to death. I don't even know if I let you talk today. <laughs> I'm on a soapbox. It's my birthday month. I'm allowed to do whatever I want. You are allowed right? to do whatever you want. It is your birthday month. Thank you again and for joining birthday. us. Thank you, my love. Will you, will you do one of our live dinners with me for my birthday this month? Yeah. Where do you want to go? I don't know. I Wait, don't know. What did, they, what did people tell us they wanted us to I don't know. Yeah. I have to go back and look. I have to go back and look, but I want to, maybe a local business would be good, right? So we can support local. Yeah. So Amber and I used to do these amazing live dinners that where we were like answering your questions live while we were making fun of each other we were eating. Kind of like this is weird to eat yeah. on camera, but then it was kind of fun. It was had super a conversation fun. With so many people. Yeah. So now that I gotten her to admit to or commit to doing this on camera, we're gonna do a live dinner sometime this month. We'll, we'll let you know. We'll give you plenty of advance notice. 
join us for an awesome birthday dinner and uh, watch me get messy with Excited. ribs or whatever the hell is going to happen again. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to pick somewhere messy, huh? Somewhere messy would be great. <laughs> but um, thanks again for always supporting what we do. I'm so excited that it's December. It's the end of 2021. And I'm going to be honest with you. This was the best, best and worst year of my life. So I'm excited uh, about it coming to an end so that we can begin a new year and kind of kind of take a deep yeah, breath. Yeah, I think this is the year of change. Next year's the year of growth. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we're so, so grateful for you. Um, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel as well as Amber's. Um, all of that information is listed in the description below. If you're watching us on Instagram, there's um, information in the bio. Please click the link. We want to talk to you. That's the bottom line. We don't care if you buy a house ever. We want you to, but we don't care. What we care about is that you have the right information and that you know that you have two friends here waiting for you in Vegas um, to just help support what you're going to do. Love it. Yes, right. we do. Thank you again. Happy December. We'll probably join you again in another week or two. So and stay happy tuned. Birthday. Thank you. I'll be a little bit older and a little bit more wrinkled when you guys <laughs> see me next time, but we'll talk to you then. Thanks again, guys. Bye.